Well, hi kids. A new feature has been added to Stable Diffusion and it's as cryptic as usual. My Stable Diffusion client is Draw Things for Mac and iOS. And in Draw Things, this new feature is called Negative Original Image Size. And well, that should be self-explanatory, of course. Now this feature is borrowed with acknowledgement of both developers from Focus, where it's called negative ADM guidance and I think the same feature is coming soon to automatic 1111 as textual inversion inference now if this all sounds like techno babble you're not alone it's not at all obvious what problem this new setting is supposed to solve the focus docs say that this should solve a problem with Excel renders looking too smooth now according to the developer uh, the highest resolution level of Excel base does not have cross attentions. The positive and negative signals for Excel's highest resolution cannot receive enough contrast during the CFG sampling, causing the results to look a bit plastic or overly smooth. Now I think I know what he's talking about and I have seen this. It's actually worse under certain samplers where the finest details are basically like non-existent. Uh, he explains that the fix that he implemented in focus is that since the Excel's highest resolution level is conditioned on image aspect ratios, we can modify those ratios on the positive and the negative side to compensate for the lack of text guidance contrast in the highest resolution level. So let me say this another way. <laughs> Excel Base has a specific issue where there isn't enough contrasting information in the finest detail. This is at the extreme end, the smallest of the noise sampling. So Excel's fine details turn to mush, they look blurry or smooth, and in really bad cases the renderer just kind of ignores that level of detail. Now the fix is to inject noise sampling at different resolutions but at the same image ratio, and not very logically these different noise sampling sizes are for the positive prompt and for the negative prompt. <laughs> now if you're having trouble visualizing what this all means, I made another video SDXL deep dive where I showed how we can manipulate Excel's level of detail, essentially the noise size, by changing the ratio on the high resolution fix. Now this is essentially the same thing, manipulating the size of the noise, but with the new settings we're combining two noise samplers at different scales to create more contrast in the noise pattern. Now, I think a way to visualize this is like a moray pattern that emerges when two differently scaled patterns are overlaid. If they're the same size, the moray pattern is less interesting or it might disappear altogether. But with two different size moray patterns, you get a lot more noise and a lot more of the, of the moray. That's a moray. Okay, so in Draw Things, we want to set original image size different to negative original image size, <laughs> but with a matching ratio. Now, we also have the target image size, which seems to scale the whole pattern up and down. So now we have three new image size settings in addition to our render size and the high res fix image size if you're using that. So it's really easy to feel overwhelmed by too many settings. Now that's why I'm making this video. So as far as I know, Focus is going to set these automatically since the goal with that interface is to hide complicated settings. In Draw Things, currently we don't get much explanation and in the version I'm currently using, the negative original size is being lowered to half automatically. And I think that makes the details soft, too soft but it's a choice, and I'm sure there are some art styles like anime where you don't want sharp detail because then, then your waifu might look like an adult and that would make your dick fall off. Now, I like noise. I like industrial machinery, if you can't tell from this video. 
And I like the kind of exaggerated details that AI creates. I call it AI Baroque. It's a level of ornamentation that doesn't make logical sense and overlives the senses. I'm not saying it's the world's greatest art style. It's just what I'm into. So I take a different approach. I want to understand the tools so I can decide what looks best. And to that end, I compared a hundred renders. I don't actually, I didn't count, but it was a lot <laughs> with this dense detail in the background. And I'm just going to summarize this. Uh, in a quick example comparison. So, let me bring this up. Uh, here's a render that I made. I'm just going to trim this out while I fix this. All right, here's a render that I made to kind of, you know, show a lot of these small details. And you'll see that it's got a lot of, you know, noise that's being turned into mechanical information and especially these gears and the cogs on the gears. Now, in this first image, these small details are not really coherent. Uh, it's pretty much just noise in the background and when you look too close it's obvious that this is AI generated because it just sort of falls apart uh, in the details. The cogs change size and sometimes the gear kind of forgets what shape it is and it just sort of merges into another one. <laughs> AI doesn't always make sense but this noise is scaled too low and it's not creating the cross attentions that are needed to fill in this level of detail. It's just mush and noise. Now, I would have accepted this as normal because we've all seen wobbly bad fill in from stable diffusion. So now look at this render where the gears are more circular and coherent. And uh, the negative noise is being rendered at a higher resolution. So these shapes are being formed better. The gears kind of better remember their original roundness, that they're supposed to be circular. <laughs> and even new details emerge, like this, this gear up here is not in this original image. Uh, but there's still some jaggy teeth and wobbly lines at the highest detail level. It's better, but it's still not, you know, it's still not convincing. Now, look at this final image. Yeah, I think this is the final image. Yeah, we'll go with this one. Yeah, so look at this final image where the negative noise and the target size were rendered as high as I could push it in the interface. And not only are the gear teeth more consistent in their spacing and their size, uh, the flat parts look more flat and they just catch the light better and uh, the edges are cleaner and more crisp. So I'm just going to flip through these three images, you know, all these images actually again, and you'll just see how the other sharpness happens too. So look at her jacket, the specularity in this coat, how these details come and go, and also look at her hair. Some of these bangs actually disappear altogether at the lower noise settings and are much more intense at the higher settings. In fact, also her eyebrows and eyelashes. It's like it's rendering at a much higher resolution by manipulating the noise scale in the high end and then restoring these sharp details. Whereas in the first image, these details either didn't exist at all or were just broken mush. So I have some recommended settings for you to start with. Now first, I match the target size. Let me bring up draw things here. Now first, <laughs> where am I? 
what I do is I match the target size with the high resolution fix if it's turned on. If it's not the high resolution fix, then it's basically just the, the main image size. Then I take the original width and height and I adjust those to 80%. 80% of the target size. Then I do the negative original width and I push that to 150% of the target size. So 80% on the original, 150% on the negative original. And y'all, these ratios are not written in stone. They're just the sweet spot that I found on my own content. And now that you know what to look for, you can start adjusting these sliders to see what kind of effects you can get on your images. Now, I hope this video helps you improve your renders and these settings become less cryptic. Admittedly, it is a lot of fiddling trying to keep these various images sizes in the same ratios. So start with a one-to-one -one ratio because it's the most forgiving and you can set it to any scale and it's very simple because you're always in a one-to-one -one ratio as long as the width and height are the same. <laughs> Portraits and landscapes they get a little weird because the ratios may not scale smoothly across the vertical and horizontal and then of course it has to be translated back into the base 64. <laughs> so much going on. <laughs> Play around though, I think it's pretty forgiving actually, and I think you'll quickly get a sense of when you have not enough detail and when you have too much detail at that highest end. And uh, that's it for this time. I know that I'm trying to cut down on my stable diffusion and my draw things videos, but I don't seem to be able to do it. <laughs> I do have a lot else going on. So if this uh, worked out for you, be sure to subscribe because YouTube is going through a little fit stage where it's not showing me any new content unless I allow them to track me across all other websites. And I'm just not going to do that. I'm not that interested in their content. As a result, I don't get to see a lot of new videos unless I'm already subscribed. It could happen to you, so if you like someone's videos, go ahead and subscribe. It doesn't hurt you. It doesn't mean anything. <laughs> you got to do whatever you can do to defeat this algorithm. Keep rendering, kids. Keep creative. And I hope you had a learn today. Give me a subscribe and a like if you want, and I will see you next time. Bye.